Hey everybody, Heather Stargazer here to do a reading for the collective for whoever, whenever, wherever. Did you guys see that solar storm last night? Oh, amazing. If you didn't see it, there's pictures all over the internet. And don't worry because we are at uh, solar maximum um, during Aurora season. So every um, 11 years, the sun flips its polarity. You know, like Earth has magnetic poles, the North Pole and the South Pole. Well, so does the sun, except the sun's surface is very tumultuous and it's constantly um, switching back and forth between its uh, North and South Pole. It will flip. Um, when that happens, it's called uh, solar maximum and the positive and the negative areas of, of polarity get closer and closer together and they start mixing. And when they mix, they uh, release a charge sometimes and that charge is uh, a solar flare. And so um, this takes 11 years for it to go um, through its cycle and at the minimum we have very little um, solar activity. Uh, you get to see aurora at high loud latitudes, high altitudes, which you typically think, but during this time of the solar cycle, um, solar maximum, it's because those the positive and negative uh, are mixing together and there's a lot of output, we get a lot more solar storms. During the equ uh, equinoxes, because the um, Earth is at an upright angle, that means that the, that the solar flares, the solar wind, is hitting our atmosphere, our magnetosphere, our ionosphere, at a right angle, and that creates a lot of um, of charge, right? Of discharge, induction of charge in the atmosphere. So if you missed it, don't worry. You'll most likely get a chance to see it again real soon um, this winter and coming through uh, 2025, 20, 26 times. So um, you don't don't be sad that you missed it. Um, but it does have a great effect on not just um, the the ionosphere, right? It's not just making pretty lights in the sky. It's also adding charged particulate into the atmosphere, which fuels storms like we've we've had. Um, there's a lot of factors fueling those storms. That's not what we're um, debating here or getting into. It's just one of the factors that feeds these cycles, and it also affects our bodies. So um, lots of people, I just saw two, 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 lots of people fell asleep last night, went to bed early, felt very drained by it. You could be feeling very drained by it. It's okay. That's natural. That's how our bodies respond. We're mostly water. We're, um, that water that's in us is, um, I like to say, iron-laden sacks of salt water, right? So we are very... Um, subject to those magnetic changes so just be patient with yourselves and others like we've been talking about um i uh i talk about these things a lot it's a passion of mine i i've um, been researching it for a long time i've done a lot of great work um to say like great work like i did great work but i i mean you know, it's okay to give yourself a pat on the back sometimes and say um, whether or not other people acknowledged it, which people did, but just for say, you know, um, that, y that you accomplished something, right? What have you accomplished? What are we looking at right now as we go into Scorpio season, right? As we're dealing with... Um, with Libra season, that, that equilibrium, right? That equinox when things are coming at us um, straight on and it's it's affecting our charge and be inducing a charge within us, right? Take it as it res resonates, 333. Three. Um, so a while back, um, I put out this book and it's about um, the solar uh, weather, the space weather, and um, how the ancients might have interpreted it and what they might have used it for. And um, I was, you know, looking through um, some things because I, I cleaned out the back room. Maybe we'll do some readings back there. I'm just feeling very talkative. Just Let's just go with it. If uh, if you want to skip straight to the cards, I'll put a timestamp in because I'm going to read you a little bit from this book. Um, it's called Turtles All the Way Down. And um, it's, it's a very uh, short chapter. It's a chapter, but it's very short. And uh, I felt like maybe we, we need to be um, re-examining some of these things. What we um, interpret as light, right? Because the light spectrum, when we're always like, go to the light, uh, love and light, I'm sending you light. What are you sending? You're sending positive vibes, right? You're sending um, that, that white light, that pure white light to people, um, but it is an energetic charge. Why do we say that? And what is the what is the fear of the darkness, right? And we talk about that a lot too, about um, integrating our shadow, being okay with um, 
not always being our best sometimes and then like not settling for things but not beating ourselves up over it right and how can we um learn to transmute these types of um ideas into workable solutions and things that help us grow not just as individuals but as a society as a as a human humanity collective right uh, so this is very aquarian we're getting into the age of aquarius and we're, we're almost completely settled in it right now and um i'm feeling it so uh Thank you for hanging out while we read this chapter. It's called Turtles All the Way Down. The book is called Light Grange, Secrets to Ancient Irish Sciences. All right, it says, I guess we could go back to the beginning and re-examine our mistakes. That might be a solution. Or we could just look at it with new eyes. Let's just pretend that no one knows what's really going on. Should be super easy since no one really knows what's going on. That's the great mystery that the senseis always speak of in the ninja cartoons and why the turtles are so profound. The great masters hidden in shells beneath the ground are me memories stacked up on top of one another for eternity. It can mean innumerable things. So for this, it can mean that all of the knowledge of the ancients and of the universe is hidden and supported by other knowledge beneath it. It's alive. The stack never stops. For the same reason, you can never win a why war with a two-year-old. There will always be another one, and you can never answer them all. Best just go wash up for dinner. Turtle soup eaten out of a half shell must have been quite a spiritual experience. I imagine swallowing in the memories of ancestors, the instant of digestion, of what they understood in my stomach, nourishing warmth in the energy of my body. Thank you. It's delicious. That was a cog, in case you missed it. It was a little nub on the side of a wheel that caught another and was set a spin. It happens in the imagination. The I, Magi, nation is the best world is the best country in the world. It is the best world, your imaginations, right? I live inside it. It lives inside you. Be careful you don't live inside it for too long. When properly used, this is the greatest tool humanity has at its disposal in everything. Turn, turn, turn. When we're kids, we're encouraged to draw what we see within and without our mind's eye. At a young age, the lines between the two are not so clear. This is to our advantage. We are uninhibited by what we think we know. We are inquisitive and curious, ready to input information and output expression. It is not a matter of the quality of the work as much as the quality of the expression that drives it. Children are hard judges of the truth and lenient on the form of show. Every possibility is a reality because they have not yet learned that it isn't. It's so beautiful. Remember how I said, don't live there in your imagination? I say this because I live there a lot. Well aware as a small child that what was going on outside my head was the real real that was simultaneously predictable and uncontrollable. When on the other side, inside myself, the kind of real was unpredictable and within my control. I can make anything happen there. All kinds of things talked to me and told me stories. The flies on the wall buzzed in my ears. The clouds left trails for me to follow. Shadows on the sidewalk outlined my thoughts. The smell of roses was my grandmother. As an adult, the observation of nuance that was cultivated in my former years have become a tool for meditation when reprieve is needed and when my other senses are at odds with each other. I remember to ask, what does this lily have to say? I wonder what the birds think. I should have known better. The song on the radio warned me. Is it really just listening to myself? Or is it simply an observation of the cogs? Are we staring at the stars out of hope? Do we need hope because we're afraid? What are we afraid of? Children will always be afraid of the dark, and men with minds sensitive to heredity impulse will always tremble at the hidden and fathomless worlds of the strange life which may pulsate in gulfs beyond the stars or press hideously upon our globe in unholy dimensions which only the dead and the moonstruck can glimpse. H.P. Lovecraft. It is our imaginations that drives our fears and our desires? Or is it, are these innately bred within the fabric of ourselves? Have we experienced something to make us feel this way? 
Is it our protective instincts? Does that make it better, easier, helpful? How could a clear acknowledgement of the differentiation help us draw better lines of what we are sensing? Should we draw those lines? Do we get a better picture of the whole, of the form, when the parts are included? I can get, it can get pretty dark. Is the acknowledgement of the spark that will shine a whole new light on ourselves, on the whole? Sometimes the only way to see the light is to allow the darkness to be seen as well. The real question is, if everything we know suddenly looks different, how does that change how we view ourselves? Mm. So thank you for listening to that. Um, because I think it's something um, important that we talk about here. We talk about here on this channel a lot, a lot of the things that were touched in that space. Um, so it's just something to meditate on and to think about the fact that the solar storms that we're experiencing and that we all um, can watch on the internet today, people in antiquity were watching um, in full view, in full color with their own eyes. How are they seeing that? How has that changed us or evolved us as, as humans, right? All right, thank you for that. So we're using the um, the uh, Rider Waite, traditional Rider Waite today, and I found the tiny tarot when I was cleaning. So we're going to use that. Um, I have the flowers out. We have Hafiz. We have runes. We have crystals. We brought it all out. Ancestors, spirits, guys, what messages do you have for the collective today? Death in the reverse. Magician in the reverse. Mm. Nine of Wands in the reverse. Nine of Swords in the upright. King of Swords in the upright. Wow. Judgment and Ace of Swords. You might be telling someone no today. Justice in reverse. Again, talking about that rebalance of things. Today might be a strange day. We might feel a little off balance. We might feel as if our manifestation powers have gone awry, gotten wonky, right? We might be feeling like the things that we want to manifest aren't coming to fruition. Maybe it's the way that we're approaching it. Maybe it's the fact that we don't have resources, whatever it is. Um, it's not, uh, it doesn't feel like it's working and that could be causing stress, right? This is anxiety, sleepless nights, things that are um, keeping us up. It, like, like the solar storms might be affecting our nervous system right now, right? That's all an illusion, really in the mental realm it's how we perceive things and it could be because we're not seeing something um, transition i just saw 12 12 something isn't transforming in the way that we had maybe hoped maybe something isn't ending in the way that we had hoped letting go of that's okay maybe it's time for us to make a decision here king of swords energy a decision a, a judgment call judgment justice in the reverse king of swords out here right because something has to be done kind of maybe letting go giving up on um something that's causing us this anxiety whatever this is it could be time to re-examine some things that have come back into the fold right making that decision it could be a no you could be like you know um back to back to that old dress code adium when in doubt leave it out right and um that if it's causing us that kind of uh that kind of stress, if it's making us feel like we are outside of our power, outside of um, our means to to take control of something or manifest something, it could be best to step back to look to a higher authority. It could be outside of us that is making that decision today. And I feel like it's um it's good to let go of things that cause us anxiety. And again, like we don't actually have to let go completely let go of a situation. We could be letting go of our idea of how we control it, letting go of how it will manifest, letting go of outcomes. I heard goal. Look at that. Ace of Cups in the reverse. Look how tiny they are. Now we have two aces in the reverse with the magician, which is all the aces in the reverse. Not offering something. Something isn't offering itself to us. We're not offering ourselves to it. Mm. and it's probably for the best i'm hearing it's for the best look at that six of cups in the upright with this nine of because it could have something to do with um, things that happened in the past remember don't go back to the past uh, we can't change the things that happened in the past we can only change our perception of them did was it a was it a mistake or was it a lesson right once we see it as a lesson nothing nothing is um really lost because we get we did gain something in that exchange right that exchange of um, perceptions how we're seeing something again like the sun does it every 11 years this talks about maybe um 
things that were nostalgic. Maybe this is memories. Maybe the memories of um, of a lost, a lost love or something that we weren't able to give our love to. Maybe something that wasn't offering its love back to us in the past is today giving us anxiety. And it, you know, it it could be because we're not letting those um, those lessons transform. Something isn't it isn't changing. It isn't ending. I heard it'll always stay the same. And it could have to do again. Here we come out with this manipulation right this idea of manipulative aspects there's a lot of scorpio energy out on the a lot of scorpio energy death rebirth eight house uh sensualness um death other people's ta other people's money taxes right things that we're all subject to things that we all go through things that change us right that um make things or heard make things grow and if you have the knight of cups in the reverse that all of this is happening we could be um remembering something or someone from our past that uh didn't that didn't emotionally evolve right and so now we have the king of swords energy out wow look at this sorry they're so tiny they're hard to keep a hold of. They're hard to just handle. Um, but now we have the death and the upright with the King of Swords because he's going to come in today and make a decision that allows that change to occur, right? That allows that transformation. That puts something to that puts something to bed. Good. If it's been keeping us up, maybe it's something that needs to be put to bed, right? And there's that rose on the flag. Do you see that rose on the flag? That talks about um, again love. It talks about purity. It's a white rose. Right? And the purification of this process and how transformative it is, right? Allow allow yourself to think of something logically. If we have to take ourselves out of the heart space for it um, and put ourselves in the mental space to, to resolve it, to bring us back into a place of peace, that's what we're that's what we're gonna do here. Can you tell us about this nine of nine of uh, interesting. Nine of wands in the reverse. We get the two of pentacles in the upright. The two of pentacles in the upright. We're done juggling this. We're done trying to keep it in balance. Justice in reverse. Imbalance. Right? We have to let go of things. If it's, if it's, if it's not changing, it, you know, we can push against that wall as hard as we want to. No matter how much force we exert against it, the wall isn't moving. Right? And so it's about letting go of that, um, making the logical decision or someone else coming in and making that, that decision for us with the facts, with information, with knowledge, with the mental realm, right? The mental sphere and letting go of that, um, thing that isn't or a person, right? Maybe it's an immature energy. Maybe it's somebody who, or something that comes in often grabs our heartstrings and then, um, leaves and doesn't change right the, there's a judgment call with with that this, these popped out the hanged man putting us on pause something needs to be put on pause maybe it's because no news isn't coming through right maybe it's because we're not excited about something maybe it's because somebody is being impulsive right and here comes the sun i love this little this little pile that came out because all will be well all right, all will be well. The sun is shining on everything again. We're talking about the sun that is here literally kissing us, blessing us, sending those char that charge down to earth to cleanse and wash and refill us, reinvigorate us. It's coming through. We just have to be, be you know, um, in the perceptive mind to receive it, right? To receive those wishes, hopes, and dreams. Nine of Cups. There's the, um, the emotional fulfillment coming through. There's that wish that you wanted, right? I saw a shooting star last night. I actually posted a short about it. If you guys want to go make a wish on that star, it's it's uh, in the short section. On this channel, and I actually posted it all over because I was really excited. So um, keep that in mind, that whatever is happening, even if you're saying no today, it's because you're tired of sitting in your bored space waiting for something to change when it just absolutely isn't. You're excited now to get up and move. It's like this relief, like you're able to absorb and, and benefit from the rest that you're now getting. Because we're not trying to keep things up in the air, right? Judgment call, the call to your life's purpose. Look at that. Letting go of the work. Anything that wasn't recognizing you, anything that wasn't giving you stability, anything that wasn't um, 
solid, right? Like the roof above your head. If it was if it was topsy turvy, or the community around you was being, um, who I heard misled. That's also been a theme that's been coming out right, lately. So be mindful of that because there is, um, you know, a choice to be made today, and sometimes it's out of our hands. Ten of Wands, the stress of that, and again, like the release, like let letting that go. Maybe um, there's like stress of maybe maybe her, the work isn't coming. You know what? That if it the work isn't coming, it's because that's not it's not time yet. Like this divine timing, like really pouring pouring into something that wasn't ever, like I said, wasn't ever evolving. And sitting in this space, I heard noxious. It could be bringing up these noxious memories, these other times that you were inhibited, these other times that either you offered love to someone or they offered it to you. Um, you offered it to someone and it wasn't received or it was used against you or um, someone offered it to you as a me mechanism to take your power away and control you. And there is a stop to that today. Um, Ace of Swords down. Look at that. Six of, or six of Swords in the reverse and we've been getting that a lot lately too. All different decks. Six of Swords in reverse with this Ace of Swords in reverse. The answer is no, I'm not going anywhere. I'm not moving anywhere. I built this thing. I worked this thing. I love this thing. This person, place, thing, whatever it is. And, um, you know, th that thing needs to change. That could be why there's this judgment call when something's coming back up today. Two Sixes talks about our relationships with the past. That nostalgic feeling. And um, standing firm in your work again, in, in what you what you you have um, created for yourself, and not letting someone else push you out of your space, right? Mental space. Look at that. And now we have the Ace of Wands and the upright as the overarching energy. That that um, new idea, that divine inspiration, that spark, right? That that return to. I heard return to grace. We're just returning to grace. Look at this. What have we got here? The tower. Woo! The tower, the knight of wands in reverse, and the wheel in reverse. Mm -hmm. Something's going to change right now for this for this um, manipulative, impulsive, player-like energy. This immature, uh, brash energy. It's going to be a shock to them. Like They're going to be stopped in their tracks. Right? Very, very surprising to them. And whatever that they were on top of, um, of the wheel from them from them gaining from this they're going to be um put back in their place right so that you can rise so that you can get where you need to be mm. very 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 interesting let's just pull the runes pull some runes ancestors spirits look at that joy runjo Wunjo, we get joy. We're going to read a little bit of that. We get the flowers and we're going to have feast. I know this is like a little bit out of order. Usually we do this part at the end, but we're going, we're just going along with the, with the flow of things, right? Joy, light. Wow. Thank you, universe. This rune is a fruit bearing branch. The time of travail has ended and you have come to yourself in some regard. The shift was due um, has occurred and now you can freely receive its blessings, whether they be a material gain or in your emotional life or in a heightened sense of your own well-being. This is an alchemical moment in which understanding is transmuted from knowledge. Wow! Mm, thank you, Spirit. The knowledge itself was necessary, but not sufficient condition. Now you can rejoice, having been carried across the gap by the will of heaven. Joyousness accompanies new energy, energy blocked before now. Light pierces through the clouds and touches the waters just as something lovely emerges from the depths. The soul is illuminated from within at the meeting place of heaven and earth, the meeting of the waters. There is a new clarity which may call for you to renounce existing plans, ambitions, goals. It is proper and timely that you submit, for Wunjo is a rune of restoration of the self properly aligned to the self. Mm. 
anybody crossing um, today, crossing bridges, crossing gaps, crossing over, whatever the um, case may be, um, it is done with love and light into, I heard, the pleasantness, okay? So whatever, um, you know, turmoil or thing that you've been dealing with today there is this official judgment that is saying um no to to something that isn't uh progressing isn't moving right it's okay to let go of that because it's really going to relieve a lot of burdens and it's going to let that sun shine through it's going to let that light in oh man you get wunjo with the ace of wands the sun the nine of cups Mm -hmm. and that then that transformative energy it's about like sit and be still and you know if their tower falls their tower falls mm, that's opening clearing the way for you to move through the soul illuminated right hibiscus oh, beauty and happiness a thing of beauty is a joy forever how gorgeous is that you are beautiful inside and out all right don't don't um I heard browbeat. Don't browbeat yourself. Oh, no, be nice to you. Okay, hidden secrets. Red rose. Three things cannot be long hidden. The sun, the moon, and the truth. Well, there you go. The sun is here today. And um, you're going to get some clarifications. Somebody's getting to the bottom of this. And like I said, a, a judgment call is being made to return the justice. Destiny. Cam Camilla. It is not the stars, it is not in the stars to hold our destiny, but in ourselves. William Shakespeare. We have blueprints within ourselves to be a certain way, right? To um, <coughs> have manifest our, manifest our own um, fate, right? The things that we integrate into the tapestry of the whole. And uh, while we are built to... Um, for a specific purpose, we have free will. It's up to us if we want to pursue that purpose, if we want to accomplish those things, if we want to grow and illuminate ourselves within. And it feels like today that is there is the opening, the availability to do that, the light shining through, the joy return, joy, happiness, sacred no lotus, enlightenment, no mud, no lotus. Wow. We're going to get a head feast and a crystal. Feast. What advice can you give us for the situation? Move forward. Wow. The, stuck in the mud, right? The lotus blooms through the mud. Don't be the stuck in the mud. Don't let it keep you down. Heard mobility, right? And that's what we're talking about, being able to move through. Absolutely. Protect your boundaries. Yup. The king of swords is excellent at that. It's going to come in through, help us out, that King of Swords energy. We need to, again, take control of our own lives, take action, be the one to set the boundaries ourselves, right? Don't rely on an outsider um, influence. I mean, they will be here, they will be helpful, but it's up to us to establish those boundaries within ourselves. Look, retreat, take a step back, take a step back. Now is not a time to move forward through this. Again, hanged me on energy. Listen, mm. we could be getting a call, like in whatever this guy is, in, in this guy right here, whatever he's advising us today, whatever information that he's bringing, it is true, it is honest, it is clear, it is decisive. Pay attention, listen to what he's telling you, okay, because he's got a, he's got a lot to say and it's going to uh, be very, very, very helpful, very enlightening heard enlightening mm. what crystal can help us today spirit what crystal can help us today got two uh soda light and fluorite wow this one says deepen your intuition what is it a friend of the chronic meditator soda light is known by some as the poor man's lapis is a salty deep blue speckled and uh striated with white calcite inclusions who needs it planners producers virgos where to put it wherever you do your best on thinking when to use it when you've had a big decision to make when you're 99 percent finished with the project but can't get your head around that last one percent don't seriously give up 
meditate with so delight, abandon solution-oriented thinking, surrender to your intuition, and watch your problem get solved from a place much deeper. Wow. Nine of Wands in the reverse. Whew. Let, that, let that sink in. All right, fluorite. What is it? Um, fluorite can range from pale green to deep purple. Often, it's both at the same time. It occurs all over the place, and it's a good to vibe with when you're all when you're all over the place. Who needs it? The perpetually distracted. Anyone with a vision worth sticking to. Where to put it? Wherever you find yourself constantly tempted to check your phone, i.e., anywhere you have Wi-Fi access, and when to use it. When you want to take an uninterrupted 20 minutes to meditate, an hour to finish a book, or a lifetime to concentrate on your unique calling to earth, mm, unique calling on earth, sharpen your focus. All of this is going to help us sharpen our focus today. It's like, again, the enlightenment, the word enlightenment keeps coming out. There's going to be some very enlightening things that allow the light to shine through. Wunjo, the sun. Coming to happiness, coming through for us today. It's okay to um, sit back and listen. All right. I hope that was helpful. I hope that you got something out of it. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for remembering to hit the like and subscribes. And thanks for coming back and seeing us again next time. Bye.